So I've got a special surprise for everybody today. So I don't know if you recall, but last year for Halloween, I convinced Toby Dog to dress up like one of our Scottish Highland cattle. You know, the cattle were still kind of new on the farm and Toby was still getting used to them. So I figured a good way for him to adjust would be to be like them. It actually worked out pretty great. And given the time of year that we're at, I figured it'd be fun to try to kick things up a notch and give somebody else the opportunity. Hey, Toby Dog. Good morning, buddy. You're full of energy. Come on out, pal. How's it going, bud? Oh, you remember this? You remember this costume? Yeah? Don't worry, you don't have to wear it this year. I'm not gonna make you wear it. Because that's right. It's gonna be Abby Dog's turn to wear it this year. Good morning, Abby Dabby Do. I got a surprise for you. How's it going, sweetie? How's it going? Yeah, you see this? It's a new surprise. Looks pretty cool, huh? You excited for it? I don't want you to chew on it yet because you're gonna get to wear it. You know, it's actually a warm one today. I think it's about 42 degrees Fahrenheit. I was really expecting to have to put all the birds away into the hoop coop, but at this point that still hasn't been necessary. And so everybody's still out here free ranging and doing their thing. I'm not sure if you can see it, but we got the cattle way, way up on the top of the hill. And I have to move them to a new paddock. And unfortunately, because it was raining for the last two days, I haven't had a chance to really build the new paddock. So I will bring you guys along for that. But first let's get our girl dressed up. You ready to try this on? Whoop. Oh, you put that on flawlessly, girl. You look wonderful. You look so good, Abby. Can you pose for the camera? Oh my gosh, sweetie, you look so good. Uh-oh, Abby already took off her hat. I'm not gonna force you if you really don't like it. I can't tell if you just knocked it off here or not. Like, Abby's happy to put the hat on. Like, it's really easy to get it on her. But then after a minute or two, she takes it off. So maybe she's not a fan. We'll give it one more shot once we get up to the cattle. Maybe she'll realize that wearing the disguise will help her blend in with her friends, the cattle, just a little bit better. Come on, dogs, let's go. I'm interrupting Abby while she's popping a squat. Don't worry, Abby, I'll wait for you. She's the most majestic Abby in the whole wide world. She's the most majestic Abby Dabby Dabby Do. Good morning, Moo Crew. How's everybody doing today? Abby, you wanna wear your costume? We're gonna give this one last shot and see if you like to wear it. Come on, my little fierce Highland cow. How's it going, Ariel? I don't think Abby's a fan of her headset here. Okay, Abby, I think you like it more as a chew toy than a costume. Ariel's very confused by the whole situation. All right, so if we're wondering which dog wore it better, I feel like I'm gonna have to give the advantage to Toby in this one, but it's okay. You know, I only wanna make them wear costumes if they don't mind them or find them neutral. Like, Abby didn't seem to like it, and so I'm not gonna force her to wear it. You know, the barn cats also collectively got together and told me that they no longer wanna wear costumes either, and so I'm respecting their wishes this year, and so there's no Halloween costumes for the barn cats either. Even though when I flash back to the past, there were definitely some adorable Horrible moments. Cancelled! All right, playtime aside, I've actually got to do some work here. I got to set up new paddock fencing for the cattle because they've eaten all the grass in that section. So I'll move them over here this morning. You know, I'm finding that I'm moving the cattle more and more faster and faster. And the main reason I'm doing that is I find that when my cattle are not satisfied with the pasture that they have, they tend to escape. And like in the last week, they escaped twice. What I've been doing is moving them to bigger and bigger paddocks with more and more grass. Again, I think it's because the nutrition of the grass is not nearly as good as say as it was in August. And so so now I don't want them to go hungry. And when they get hungry and restless, that's when they break out. I'm actually toying with actually even giving them a hay bale very soon, just so that they have more to choose from and more to eat. But yeah, lately I've had some cranky cattle and if the cattle ever go down to like the bird yard area, they create so much havoc and destruction. In fact, I had this oak tree that I've been growing for the last couple of years. It got demolished by the cattle about three days ago and I'm still bummed out about it. I'm hoping it maybe grows back if I, you know, cut it at the, the kind of lower trunk, but but uh, I'm very sad about that one. I was working hard on growing that tree.
Pablo Barncat, what are you doing out here? You don't usually come out this far. <laughs> Abby, be on your best behavior with Mr. Pablo. He's an old man now. He needs respect and he doesn't like rough play. And plus, if you do rough play, he might beat your butt. And if that happens, it's your own fault. Abby, sit. Good girl, good girl. That's how we behave around our elder barn cats. I gotta keep putting these fence posts in, and we gotta run wire. <laughs> Don't bark at Pablo either. And Pablo, I'll feed you in a little bit. I know that's what you're after. And Pablo's protector, Toby, is off looking at something in the bushes. I'm not sure what he's been exploring. Let's go check it out. Hey, Toby Dog, I've noticed you've been very focused on something here this morning. Did you make a discovery in the swale, or are you just doing your usual investigations? Yeah, Toby's always very focused on stuff that's living inside these swales. Abby, I want you to behave. I don't want you chasing Pablo. I know, he seems like a fun playmate, but he's not. You know, Abby has so much chaotic, good puppy energy. I feel bad for her sometimes. It's like none of the other animals on the farm want to play with her. You know, Toby Dog does not really enjoy playing with her that much. The barn cats hate playing with her. The cattle are probably not good playmates either. But at her core, she's just a pup who wants to play, and so I often try to play with her so she can get a little bit of that energy out. That's why I do things like run her around on the ATV. This gives her a chance to like burn off some of that excess puppy energy. But I have noticed that she's chilling out just a little bit. As time's gone on, she, she seems to be more mature. She knows how to control herself better than even say two or three months ago. From a training perspective, she's been really good with pretty much all the birds at this point, at least as I've been supervising her. I've tried a couple of times to like hide and like just watch her. And when that's happened, I've had to, you know, make her collar vibrate, let her know she shouldn't be trying to chase or play with a bird, even if I'm not watching. So I'm still working on that part with her. So now once you have the fencing posts in place, the next step is to add the wire. I've got to admit, I really love moving the cattle this way and using the step-in posts and the poly rope as a way to move them around. It's very efficient, it's very relaxing to be out here working on this stuff. It's probably some of my favorite farm tasks. So even on a day that's kind of cold and windy and dreary like today, I don't mind being out here at all. It's actually kind of nice. Sorry I knocked you guys over. I need a second reel of rope to get all the way around this paddock. You know, when I first started moving cattle like this last year, I think it took me about an hour and a half to set up a paddock like this. These days, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes usually. It's not bad at all. You know, anytime you're doing something new and you're learning on the fly, it's always harder. But once you invest a little bit of time, you get some practice in it all, it's really not that bad. All right, let's run this last bit of rope here. You know, the weather we have today is very much Scottish Highland weather. When I picture Scotland, even though I've never been to Scotland, I picture this. Gray skies, a little bit of rain, cold and windy, but yeah, no. I, I kind of like it. I'd have no complaints on this one. Like when it's downpouring rain, I'm not a fan, but like just like misting like this, not bad. Pablo, I'm so confused as to why you're out here like this. I think you just want me to feed you if I'm not mistaken. And I will, but not anytime soon. You got probably another hour before food time. Can you handle that? And Abby, leave Pablo alone, please. Come with me. We're gonna keep running fence wire. All right, we're at the end of the line. Now this is one of the Gallagher reels. If you guys are ever interested in buying this stuff, I'll leave an affiliate link down below. What I like about it is it has this lock that clicks in place. And so now I have tension on my rope. See, but it's slack, now it's tense. I want it to be pretty tight, but not too tight as I pull it, clip it to the fence. There we go. You see, we got a nice tight fence. What do you think, Abby? Does it pass your inspection? She doesn't care. She doesn't care at all. Oh, seems like the rain's starting to pick up. Now I have one last step before I can move the cattle in. Can anybody guess what it is? Well, if you said put my cross fence in to divide the paddock, you're 100% correct. And while I recommend for people to buy the expensive reels when you're adding your big strands of wire, I actually think cheap electrical reels like this that you can get at the hardware store work much better for your cross fence. So what this does is lets me divide the paddock for what the cattle are gonna get for today. And so on this side, it'll be for tomorrow. This side's all today. You know, Pablo, I gotta say, you're a pleasant surprise as a helper today, even though I still question your motives. Now it's time to move the cattle. Sorry, guys, it's just never gonna get old. Hey, cows, come on, cows, fresh grass, come on, cows, come on. Hey, cows, fresh grass, come on. Hey, Kels, come on, Kels, fresh grass, come on, come on. Yeah, I've definitely found over the course of this year, if you put the effort in with your cattle, they will follow you and be almost responsive as a dog, or I don't know, maybe a cat. Hey, Pablo, fresh Pablo, come on, Pablo. Let's go, Pablo, come on, Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Good boy, you're a good cat, you know that kid? Mm. 
Now the rain's starting to get heavy. Mm. Hey, gals, come on, gals. Fresh grass, come on. Starting to pour. Not nearly as fun to be outside now. Come on, guys. Let's go. Good to see you, Jimmy. Come on, Ariel. Keep moving. Bonnie McMurray, Joey Ramon, I see you both. Let's go. Keep going. Anne, Annabelle, come on. Abby, if you need to give him a nudge, give him a nudge. Yeah, Annabelle, there's fresh grass. It's ready for you. Sometimes when the cattle have to change directions, I have to give them a little bit of a nudge to get them where I want them to go. Come on, Annabelle. Let's go. Anna Green Gables, you too. Let's go, sweetie. That's what I like to see. All right. See, and everybody's happy. Look at the calves are so happy. Everybody's happy. They got fresh grass now. Such a satisfying conclusion, or at least to this part of the video. And it looks like I spoke too soon because I just got my reels all tangled. <sighs> I am not good at ropes and knots, and I often make a mess of my reels, as you can probably see. I'm gonna clip this back to the fence and get it nice and taut. Boom, there we go. Oops, still a little too much slack. That's no big deal. Just move it up a little bit further. There we go, now it's nice and tight. And as for this reel, I'll just move it out of the way. This one rolled up. Now I'm just gonna set this one aside for right now. I'll move it tomorrow. Like typically what I'll do is one day I'll do my fencing setup and then the next day I'll do my fencing collection for the old fence. And then the following day or two days after that, I'll do my setup for my next paddock. Just kind of keeps working in a cycle. Abby, are you ready for this? Don't be scared. <sighs> Sorry about that guys. Still have to move the water trough. Now, some might say, hey, Morgan, you just wasted about 30 gallons of water. And I will just simply say that water goes into the ground, which goes into the aquifer, which powers our well, which is where that water comes from. So it's just simply continuing the cycle. Come on, Abs. Move this thing into place. Now, this looks like a good spot for their fountain today. Now, I got to say, I'm so happy with how our water setup is, because if you guys look over here, you can see I have one of these little jack points where I can pull my hose in and out. So see, so these are what's known as the Plassen Quick Connects. Again, if you're thinking about what infrastructure to buy if you want cattle ever, these things are worth their weight in gold. I have them now sort of scattered all over the pasture. This water line you see here is what brings it from my pump down below. So all I have to do is turn the pump on and this will be running. Now some may ask, wouldn't I want to bury my water line? Wouldn't that prevent it from freezing? And the answer is, if I really want to prevent my water line from freezing year round, I would need to bury it like, I don't know, six feet or so, something like that. Our watering system in the pasture is really meant as a warm season only time. And so we're coming to the end of its usefulness. And you know, some mornings when we have a freeze, like say it's down in the twenties, I won't be able to pump the water until the afternoon when things thaw out. But once we get into the super cold times, that's when I really need to have the cattle in the barn so that I can can just pump their water with a heated hose and have a heater for their water trough. I think sometimes people overbuild their infrastructure on their farm to suit all situations when you really only need to build your infrastructure to support what's practical and what makes sense for your farm. You don't need to waste money or energy doing stuff. We'll let that fill up as we go do the other animal chores. I will just set myself a reminder to turn that off in 45 minutes because I don't want the water to overflow. And yeah, I could use a like a valve, like a ball float to just let it run constantly. But I find I actually waste water doing that. I have the risk of things freezing overnight because I forgot to turn it off and that can actually be a problem unto itself. If the water's not flowing and it freezes, nothing bad really happens. The water's flowing or I have the hydrant open and it freezes and create a whole bunch of issues. Hey Joey Ramon, how's it going buddy? I'm just gonna wait here patiently with you. Maybe? No, not cool, I get it. Yeah, really only Jimi Hendrix is the calf that lets me hang out with them. The other calves are still kind of skittish. But I have high hopes for Bonnie McMurray over here. Just because her mom, Ariel, such a great gal. Yeah, you are my favorite cow. Good girl. Here we have the wild barn cat stalking the savanna, surrounded by the giant wildebeest. The barn cat is uncertain if he's predator or prey in this situation. How are my cranky, soggy chickens doing, huh? Oh, you're probably hungry. Then where's our food? I actually wonder if they even need water, given how rainy it's been. Yeah, they need to be topped off. Here you go, guys. I need a fresh bag for tomorrow. How's it going, Moron Brother? Whoa, hey, didn't mean to spook you, dude. I've been trying to pet the Moron Brothers every morning. They don't seem to like it. And here we have Black Francis. Hey, Black Francis, can I pet you? No? All right. So funny. Like they have a perfectly good available feeder here, but they have to fight over this feeder here. Such is the way of the chicken. I know one group of animals that's not complaining about the wet weather are the ducks and geese. They absolutely love it when it's like this. Which makes perfect sense. Hey, Pablo, you still hungry? Yeah? 
All right, well, we'll feed you in a moment. Here we have Ginny Barncat hanging out. Hey, Ginny. How are you doing? But you're hungry too. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little farm wrap up. I'm gonna go feed these hungry barn cats and I'll be back with another video real soon. But thanks for watching everybody.